God's grace peace to you, friends. Uh, we've had some weird weather this week. Hmm. A little bit of snow on Wednesday, a little bit of warmth. But again, it is spring and it is Wisconsin. And regardless of the weather, regardless of what is going on in the world, we are a part of God's good creation. And I hope you've had a time this week to celebrate, to take in the changing of the seasons, the budding of the small flowers, the growing of the grass, and all the things that we look forward to as spring finally comes and we get to celebrate more and more outside. Regardless of all things, we come together this day to celebrate the good news that Jesus Christ shares with us. So I invite you now to join me as we worship together. Would you join me in our opening prayer? God of truth, you have revealed yourself to the people of every time, place, and situation. May we not put limits on where or how your spirit might capture human hearts and spread your word of your gospel far and wide for the sake of our risen Lord. Amen. Today, our scripture comes from the book of Acts and tells a story of some import in the way we look at some things. This is from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the wilderness road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official, a queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah, then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. And he asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and a lamb silent before the shearer. So he does not open his mouth and in his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation, for his life is taken away from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask, does this prophet say, about himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news of Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, 
Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way, rejoicing. So my friends, today we're going to talk a little bit about baptism. So in this story we read about Philip and an Ethiopian eunuch, one who by traditional means, because he is a eunuch, has been excluded from the faith and the family, who's been said, you are other and are not welcome to join in. And so this eunuch, who has a lot of money, who's head of the treasury of an entire country, is riding in a carriage, and the Spirit calls to Philip. Philip goes in and talks to him. They share in the reading of Scripture, and the eunuch says to him, help me understand, what does this mean? And Philip begins to teach and tell him the story of Christ. And as they're going, he looks out the window, and he sees the water, and he jumps and says, please baptize me. Is there anything that's going to stop me? Now, some in the church would have said, you haven't studied enough. You're, you're a eunuch. You can't do this. Oh, you're from another country. Oh, list of reasons. And instead, the Spirit fills Philip, and Philip jumps out and said, let me baptize you now into the faith and family of Jesus Christ. They leap out of the carriage. He douses him in water. He joins out of the death and into new life through the waters of baptism. And that's it. Philip then poofs. And the eunuch goes back to his country, to his people, and shares that same story with them. And the question comes down to, in some ways, what's so special about baptism? Well, guess what? (laughs) The actual act of baptism, well, it's not all that amazing, is it? I can tell you I was baptized December 11th, 1977, at Peace Lutheran Church, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, in Charlotte, Michigan with my mom and my dad. I'm sure with lots of members of the congregation, I do not remember Pastor Gail, uh, only because I knew her growing up, and my godfather, the Reverend Arlo Peterson, who was Lutheran, who to this day, if he were alive, would tell you I was baptized Lutheran, so I'm always Lutheran. Not so sure about that. And my beloved godmother, Mary Louise, who was Hannah's namesake. And they gathered around me, and they celebrated my baptism. The water was poured on my head. I was a kind of a pain in the butt kind of child, so I'm sure I screamed a lot. I don't really recall because I was two months old. And we had a probably a potluck at the church, some jello salad, my guess is. That's about all I can tell you. I have a picture of my sister and the same people being baptized two years later 
Uh, but I've yet to find one of me. I'm sure it's somewhere in a box at my mom's house. I'm not sure what it did for me. I'm not Lutheran. I didn't somehow magically become something different. In the same way, I can vividly remember Hannah's baptism, March 23rd, uh, 2014, at the Union Church of Hinsdale, a UCC church with one of my dear friends, Reverend Tom Parrott Sheffer, who did the baptism. And we didn't just get a regular baptism, right? We got a baptism with water from Jerusalem, uh, from the River Jordan and such. Uh, special, special water. Our friends and family were gathered around from Michigan, from Illinois. Our godparents were there. And my best friends, the Wentlings, and Lori's brother-in-law and sister, Brenda and Jay. And we all gathered and we dipped Hannah in this magical water, from the Middle East and the tap water from the church. And we had a party. All the folks in the church were there. It was beautiful, it was special, and it was still water. That's what it is. So let's just think for a second about this. So how it normally goes when I do a baptism is we take the water. We take it out and we pour out the water. The water is poured. We bring up the child or the teenager or the adult and we ask them the questions. The little ones ask the questions about for their parents' sake and they answer for the little one. Teenagers, adults answer for themselves. And then I take the water and I take it and I do a baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we as a congregation gather together and make promises, both in remembrance of our own baptisms, but to say to this new one who is brought into the family of faith that we promise to be with them as their family of faith as well. Now, somehow, baptism's taken on a very, very important thing. Not saying it's not, but somehow people that aren't baptized sometimes feel that they're not worthy to be a part of the church or to take communion or to be welcomed in because I've never been baptized. Long ago, there were ideas that if you weren't baptized, you couldn't go to heaven. All of these things are made up. This literally is water from the sink in the chancel room or from the community room. It's nothing special, and that is the amazing beauty of baptism. Much like communion, where we take common elements and celebrate an uncommon event, making it common in our lives, another invitation into faith and family, We do the same with this water. The water is nothing special. Dumping the water on a child or a teenager or an adult's head doesn't do anything. But we, as the people of God, come together and say, because of this water, because of this symbolic act, we will do something extraordinary and surround this person as a family of faith. Through good times and bad, through all that it is, we will stay and stand with them. Maybe that's the beauty of baptism. We take a symbolic act of water on someone's head. And somehow we open ourselves to the idea that they too are part of the family and faith that we hold ourselves to. That this little bit of water, something unassuming, somehow gives them access to who we are at our best and to our family of faith. So I wonder, do you know when you were baptized? How about confirmed? When you were confirmed, you just said, I do affirm my baptism. How about when your kids were baptized or confirmed? Or grandkids or great-grandkids? It's a reason to celebrate, and much like Philip and the eunuch, they came together to celebrate a new entry into faith, a new way of thinking and being in this world. I hope the next time your hands are wet, the next time you see the water, the next time we have a baptism together, that you can take the water, that you can take your memories, that you can take all that you are and rededicate yourself to the teachings to the learnings, to the family and faith of Jesus Christ, that together, through all of us, not through just water or table, but through all of us, we can find a new way to celebrate, find a new way to learn, a new way to be 
the family of faith that God, through Christ, has called us to be. Amen. join me in a moment of prayer. God, we give you great thanks that we might gather in all the various ways we do in your name today. We'd ask you to pour our blessings, not just upon your people, but upon your entire creation, that we all may bear the good fruit you have called us to do, that we all may be your hands and feet reaching out into the world in need to pour out your blessings upon all of your creation. We'd ask this day that you Surround each one of us even more with your presence, that those of us who find ourselves not in the places we would like to be are reassured by your grace and mercy. For those of us who don't think life could get any better, that you celebrate with us and hold us even closer as we live in joy. For all the rest of us who aren't sure which way we're going some days, God, give us guidance. Be with us as we walk our earthly paths that we might more fully walk the path that Christ has laid before us. It is with your great blessing, with the great courage that we possess because of your blessings, and with the knowledge and love of Christ upon our hearts, that we raise our voices together and pray as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my friends, as you go about your daily lives, remember that you have been called and baptized in the faith and family of Jesus Christ, that the love of God surrounds you and surrounds all of creation that you live in midst of. And all that you do and all that you are, remember that you belong to God. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.